Hi, this is Tanya Becker, and I'm your host for today's episode of Parts View Exchange Talks Boating. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Parts View Exchange Talks Boating wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Amazon Music. Chris Albert, the general manager of Fortress Marine Anchors, is here with me today. Fortress is a leader in marine anchoring with anchoring solutions for boats and applications of all types. Anchoring is one of those tricky areas of boating. It seems really simple, but there's a lot more than meets the eye. A lack of anchoring knowledge and experience can at best lead to quite a bit of frustration out on the water, at worst can be quite dangerous. So today we're going to cover anchoring basics, and Chris has agreed to have a follow-on conversation discussing some more advanced issues as well. Thanks so much for being here, Chris. Thank you, Tanya. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on here today. Good. This is going to be an interesting conversation. I mean, we were, talk we were just talking about this, but anchoring is one of those things that seems really simple, but it's actually quite complicated in some ways. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, when I first uh, when I first came to this job, uh, I think I told you I came in from the military, so I was I was in the Marine Corps, so I rode on boats before, but um, but never actually piloted one myself. And and so, you know, I thought that anchoring was just all about weight and and throwing some heavy thing off of the side of the boat, and and then you're good. But um, being here at Fortress Anchors, uh, lightweight aluminum anchors that actually work based off of their design is has taught me very different. So there's a whole art and technique to this that, that people have to learn. Absolutely. So I'm going to start by asking you a really basic question, but I think it's an important one. To some people, it's going to seem a little silly, but, you know, the need to properly anchor extends beyond just trying to stay put in your favorite fishing spot or swimming hole or so forth. You know, what are some of the occasions that really people need to think about proper anchoring? Well, there's a few things. I mean, yeah, you've got your, your your fishing hole, you've got your swimming spot, you know, you've got your diving spots, you've got your 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 sandbars. But here's the thing: like, whenever you're going out into the open water, you're dealing with this variable, and it's it's called the ocean, right? <laughs> or, or the body of water that you're in. If it's a lake, right? I mean, and and these things can be very unpredictable. And if you're out in the open water, and let's say your engine breaks down and you don't want to drift out, I mean, you need an anchor on board. It's it's a vital piece of safety equipment that people need to have on board. Um, and, and, and that's a very important part of what we do here. Um, we know that we're creating something that's going to potentially save lives. So, right. Good. That That is a very important point. You know, engine malfunction of some sort, system malfunction, you know, and not wanting to <laughs> drift to God only knows where. So that's uh, really, a, really a very important point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially a place here like Florida, you know, it, it, everything looks so calm, right? But the weather can change based on, on, on a dime, right? That, and you know, you're not too far from international waters anywhere you go either. So, you know, you don't want to run into any, any of those incidents. <laughs> well, uh, that's maybe today more than ever. But, uh, you know, I, as our, our listeners know, I live in Chicago, right on Lake Michigan. I mean, I live, you know, about a mile or so away from the lake, actually. And, and uh, Lake Mich Michigan is, is obviously not the ocean, but it is kind of like the ocean, and, and people tend to t tend to underestimate it. There's a, there's a lot of accidents and unfortunately um, deaths and other problems on this lake that, that are just caused by people underestimating it. Right, history is wrought with overconfident voters. Right, <laughs> I mean that's that's uh, been going on for thousands of years, and and you know you don't want to become another another uh, story in those annals, right? That's uh, I try to avoid that. <laughs> so we're going to set aside um, military boats and uh, commercial boats, you know. Um, but what are the basic types of anchors available to recreational boaters, and and the kind of the advantages of each style? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got your 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 basic uh, delta anchor. You got your CQRs. You've got your Rockna. Um, and, and a lot of those anchors, they work with a single fluke that, that tends to dig in, but they also work based off their weight. So the weight comes down, digs into the, into the sea bottom. Then um, for, for down here in Florida, we have a lot of coral reefs. So a lot of people use grappling hooks to try to save the reefs. Um, that's a very simple setup. Um, and, and, you know, when you're on a reef, you don't want to use something that's very destructive to, 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 the, to, to the reef or the environment. So that's where the grappling hook comes in. That you've got basic mushroom anchors that uh, a lot of kayakers use, um, and, and they work based off of weight as well. Um, you've got some kayakers who go out there and they'll just take a, a dumbbell and they'll throw it out there and, 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 
and that'll 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 work as well. Then you have the the Danforth and Fluke anchors, uh, which is what Fortress an- and Guardian anchors are, and uh, these anchors tend to work based off of their design. All right, so so the Danforth anchor when it first came about, um, it, it it operated based off of a Fluke design that 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 dug into the sea bottom, and um, the the big difference between a basic Danforth anchor and a Fortress anchor is that the Danforth is welded. All right. So, so it, it, there, there's two pieces. You've got the shank and then you've got the crown and the fluke set up, right? And those are all welded together. But if that anchor breaks or bends on the water, you're, 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 I don't, I want to pin my language here, but you're not lucky, right? You're, you're SOL, right? So, so <laughs> you can't really repair that anchor on the water. So when our founder, Don Hallerberg was, was cruising around the world in his Hatteras yacht, he'd previously uh, been an engineer who, who worked on the Apollo missions. Um, he, he was in retirement and he was cruising around and he kept uh, having anchor failures at sea. So he wanted to create something that didn't have any welds that could be, be repaired on the water if necessary. And that's where fortress anchors come in. There are no welds in the entire design. They're lightweight. They're easy to manage. Um, you know, our, our, our four pound anchor is, is good for most, uh, most leisure boats that those go from 18 feet, to 28 feet. Um, and, uh, works based off of the design. It, it digs right into the sea bottom. Um, and every part of that of that anchor is covered by a lifetime parts warranty, right? So if any part of the anchor breaks or bends, you can repair that part on the water uh, or you can p- replace that part on the water and we'll replace the part free of cost minus the cost of shipping. Got it. That, that makes tons of sense. You know, and anchoring like so many things in life has its own language, right? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> terms that seem a little funny, it seems to me could be a little simpler. Um, but, you know, what are some of the basic basic anchoring terms people need to be familiar with? Well, yeah, you need to be familiar with the term road, right? So yeah. there's the anchor road. Uh, that's a combination of, of chain and line, right? Or, or rope. Uh, for non-boating people, and and uh, what you want there is is enough chain for for a fortress anchor to help the anchor to sink. And a lot of people don't understand that, right? It's such a lightweight anchor that it, if you don't have any chain on there, it could potentially kite through the water, and you, it'll take a while to get to the sea bottom. So you want a little bit of chain on there, increases the effectiveness of the digging. Uh, and then you want nylon rope on there. And the the reason why you want nylon is because when we're talking about rope, there's, there's flex and there's shock, right? And, and you want that elasticity that comes from nylon because they, the, the, the line is going to stretch out, right? And when it stretches out, you want it to go back to its original uh, uh, um, tightness. Um, and if you're dealing with other materials, then, then they could potentially stretch out very, very, very you know, beyond their, their, their original form. And you have a, a, a line that's no longer effective and you could have rope failures. Um, so that, those are a, a big things that you want to think about there on a basic uh, fortress anchor. You've got your flukes, you've got your shank, you've got your crown. Um, and, and those are, uh, those are very uh, um, uh, important parts to know, right? When, when, you, when you're looking at the, the different parts of the anchor um, and you know, you want to be familiar with uh, where to throw the anchor, right? So you want to put it out um, uh, uh, on the bow. You don't want to put it out on the stern. Good. An anchor scope, is 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 the angle right the the ratio of of line to uh, uh, the bottom of the of the body of water correct correct right and th- that's a big thing to think about here right when we're talking about scope right we're talking about the amount of line per foot of water okay. right so so the amount of road per foot of water and the reason why you want to have enough scope so we recommend a minimum of seven to one scope that's a minimum a lot of times you might need up to 10 to one so that means you need 10 feet of line per foot of water there um and and the reason for that is because fortress anchors don't work based off of weight right it's not you just throw it over and it's gonna it's gonna you know sink and then you're gonna be fine you actually need to set this anchor and in order to set it because of the way the flukes are designed, it needs to be at a certain angle to allow it to dig into the sea bottom. Right. I think that's an important point that the scope needs to be um, considered based on the type of anchor and really your and really the environment. Right. I mean, I you see anchor scope ratios all over the place. You know, I've seen articles that say no more than three to one, no more than 
you know, or no less than five to one, or, you know, there's different numbers, but I think, um, you know, a, a large part is related, you know, related to the type of anchor you have, correct? Right. Very much so. And and this is another important point to bring up. Um, the type of, you, type of anchor you're using should really depend on the sea bottom, right? So if you're dealing with, with mud or you're dealing with sand, you're looking for a fortress anchor, right? That, that That's the type of anchor that's going to be able to dig in. If you're dealing with a rocky bottom or a very hard bottom, those flukes might not be able to penetrate into the sea bottom. And then you're going to have to, to um, deal with something with a little bit more weight, right? That makes sense. That makes sense. And we're going to talk about this a little late, later, but there's also times where you need more than one anchor. So there, from what I understand, there's you know, terms like lunch anchor, lunch, lunch, lunch hook, working anchor, storm anchor, thing, terms like that. Is is that true? Right. Yeah, very much so. So the, the most basic situation where you're going to need more than one anchor is when you're going out to a sandbar. I mean, that's a very popular thing here to do in Florida. And for that, you're going to meet, need, you know, one anchor on the bow, one anchor on the stern, right? Uh, and then and, and the stern anchor, you're going to walk out, right? The, the bow anchor, you're going to actually set. Um, but there's other times, you know, if you're if you're in a, a storm situation, you might need uh, to do some Bahamian mooring, right? Where where you have one coming off the bow, one coming off the side. Um, you might have to to set up. Uh, you might have to be mindful of swing, right? So if you're around other boats or structures in the water, uh, and there's a potential to swing, you may need to set another anchor uh, to 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 keep that from happening. And that's another very important point about when you're setting your anchor. Uh, if you're in a situation where there's going to be swing involved, you want to make sure that you're setting out just enough lines so that you're not going to swing into other boats if the current changes or anything like that. That makes sense. And, and that seems um, especially important to me with this with this uh, fortress style anchor that requires a, a larger anchor scope, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, if you're in a swimming hole or something where there's other boats around, you're, you're good chance you're going to need a second anchor to keep it from swinging. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got to be very much aware on the water. I mean, again, you can go on social media and you can see all these different boat fails that happen <laughs> and, and things like that. And it's because people aren't paying attention to what they're doing. And like I said at the beginning, the ocean is unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. There's there's forces of physics out there that that you know uh, we need to be aware of. And 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 uh, when you're 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 piloting or, or captaining a vessel, um, you're responsible for everybody's lives and safety on board. So yes. The boat fails on YouTube are quite entertaining to me, mostly because I'm glad that I'm not in the situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> my favorite of the dock or the um, la boat launch fails; those are usually quite entertaining. But um... I, I'm in the capital of boat launch fails here in South Florida. <laughs> we uh, we tend to get a lot of those, and, and uh, we see them all over the place. Uh, that and um, Coming in at a, in and out of Hallover Inlet, they've got some very strong currents there, and, uh, and you see these boats trying to trying to travel through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that can be tough, even if you know what you're doing. But let alone, there's plenty of folks that don't know what they're doing. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned physics, and and anchoring, like so much of boating, is all about physics. So I want to discuss that a bit. Um, you know, how can first of all, how can a boater best determine which anchor they're going to need based on holding power requirements, the type of surface bottom, et cetera. We kind of talked about the surface bottom a little bit, but I think right. holding power requirements is a, is a really important thing for folks to consider. For us, um, so we, we have a sizing chart up on our website where, where boaters can determine which size they're actually going to need. Um, we also make recommendations for the line and the chain to put in the road. Um, you know, I, and, and I would go toward the manufacturer's uh, sizing charts. Every every major anchor manufacturer has a sizing chart. Um, one of the things that surprises people with the Fortress is is how light our anchors are for the type of vessel. So I'll give you an example of this. The, the, the U.S. Co uh, Coast Guard uh, Sentinel class cutters, they use our 69 pound anchor. Um, that's a massive vessel. That's a 150 foot vessel that uses a 69 pound anchor up on the bow of the ship. And, and so, you know, that 69 pound anchor, 
I mean, we've had some legendary tests done. Uh, the Biscayne Bay Challenge back in 1990, um, we actually had a, a tugboat go out and, and, and put that 69 pound, pound anchor to the test. Uh, there's a video of this on YouTube. It stopped a tugboat in its tracks at 20,000 pounds of pressure. Uh, and then the line, which was rated to 50,000 pounds, it snapped. It snapped, so the line failed before the anchor failed. They went and they dove and and, and brought that anchor up, and uh, that that anchor is actually sitting down in our uh, our front lobby right now, and it doesn't have a scratch on it. I mean, that that's that's what we're talking about here with Fortress. Um, you know, I think uh, you have to be aware of what the capabilities of each anchor are based on the sea bottom. So again, Biscayne Bay is very muddy. We've also tested in the Te Chesapeake Bay, very muddy. Um, you know, around Florida, we've got sand and, and mud in different places. Um, and, and for those types of conditions, I, I believe our anchor is, is the absolute best you can buy. Um, for rocky bottoms, Again, you're probably going to want to look more toward a CQR or something with a little more weight uh, that can actually dig around those rocks. That makes sense. That makes sense. So scope is the, is the next part of this physics discussion. We've already talked about this, this a bit. Um, right. And, you know, basics of boating's articles always talk about calculating scope. I mean – this is a pretty. This is not high math, right? I mean, you know right. what? I mean, how, how do you it, how do you figure it out? I mean, again, I think it comes down to. I, I don't think you need a calculator. I don't think. I, I think it comes down to common sense here, right? You want to get enough line out there where, and if you if you actually see a fortress or any Danforth style anchor, um, you want to get enough line out there so that that it's going to have the angle to dig in, right? right. And and that means you're going to have you're going to need a, a minimum of seven feet for every put, foot of water you're in. Um, you need to be mindful. I mean, uh, it, take a look at your charts, right? Um, so, so there's a lot of different. Um, uh, you, you need to be mindful of the depth, but you also be, need to be mindful of of the type of sea bottom you're in. You really, if you're going to anchor, you really want to try to aim for places where it's actually labeled as an anchorage, right? Um, because you don't want to be anchoring on a coral reef. You don't want to be anchoring in, in places where it's going to actually kill the environment. Um, so, so you want to aim for those types of uh, uh, sea bottoms and, the, and those types of places on the map um, if you know you're going to be anchoring. If you're in an emergency, um, then you need to get it out there and you need to stop the boat and you need to be very aware of your, your, your surroundings, right? Uh, and, and that goes for any case, but, but particularly if you're in an emergency. Um, one thing I would say for, for an emergency as well uh, is that uh, you should have not just your, your, your regular anchor, you should have a storm anchor on board that's a size up from from what you would normally use uh, because if you're facing heavily windy conditions um, you're going to want a little bit more holding power there so so that's something we'd recommend so if you're normally going with for us an fx7 we recommend you go up to an fx11 for your storm anchor um, keep that stowed we have stowaway bags for this purpose keep that stowed on board it, it's it's very quick for assembly once um, as long as you have the mud palms on it just takes two bolts takes three minutes to assemble, you get that out there and then, um, uh, you know, use it, use it, uh, uh, deploy it as, as quickly as possible, right. To, to make sure everybody's safe. That makes sense. That makes tons of sense. Um, just back to this issue of scope a little bit. I'm, I'm a very visual person. Um, mm -hmm. math was never my strong suit. So I just think of it as the, um, you know, like the, a triangle or like a, a, a mountain. You don't want right. you don't want the um, gain of the mountain or the, to be too steep, right? I mean, you want it to right. be um, a little flattened out as much as as, as much as reasonable. Right. You, you're basically you, <laughs> you're you're creating. Like, I don't know if you ever seen those um those angles, the 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 ruler angles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like <laughs> I'm, the I'm triangles you have to use in school. Angle, but yeah, <laughs> it, it, it basically looks like a wedge. You're right. basically you know, the boat's at a right angle with the sea bottom and then you're, you're creating this, this, end. and we have some diagrams out, yeah. um, on our website as well that, that I could send you as well to put out with this, uh, with this podcast. Absolutely. Um, and that's a good point. I'm going to link to your anchor selection guide as well as, um, as well as that, um, the scope diagram you mentioned just so, so people can to access it, that readily. So here, awesome. Here's a kind of a, you know, a, a ba another basic question. I guess this is a bank basics of anchoring discussion. So 
it's appropriate. You know, wh- why do you not want to anchor from your stern um, or the rear of your boat, unless it's like a sec- secondary anchor situation? Why always? That's a fantastic out? question. Yeah. Um, so there's a few different reasons. One, when you're actually anchoring, you want to head into the current, right? So you're anchoring into the current. So, and you're allowing the current to drift you back. So that helps with setting the anchor. So that that's a big reason. Another big reason is when you're pulling the anchor, particularly if you're working with a fortress or a Danforth style anchor, you want to be directly over the anchor when you're, when you're, um, pulling it up. So, so having it on the bow is going to actually give you a lot more control, right? Cause you're going to be able to bring the bow right up over the anchor so you can pull directly up. Um, and that, that's very important. Otherwise you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get back to, uh, to the, um, you know, if you're fighting the current and everything like that, using your rear propellers, trying to, trying to get into it, you know, you're, you're going to have a heck of a time getting over that anchor to pull. Right. So that, that, that's a really important factor to consider. You really want to put yourself in the best position where you're going to be able to control it. Gotcha. That makes all the sense in the world. You know, and speaking of of setting your anchor, what is the best process for setting setting uh, a fortress uh, Danforth style anchor? Absolutely. So, what you want to do is one again, be aware of your surroundings. If there's boats around there, you want to be wary of of how much line you're, how much scope you're going to put out, right? Um, but the first thing you want to do is you want to head your bow into the current, all right? You're going to drop the anchor allow the current to pull you back, right? When you feel it catch, then you slowly put the the vessel in reverse, allow it to set. And once you're set, you know, again, just be mindful that of, of swing, how, how, how far out you're coming, uh, whether or not you're going to swing into other vessels or rocks or things like that. Um, so that's the best process for setting. I, we've got a whole video on this as well. And you do the process, great, and I'll link to that as well. And the process for retrieving your anchor is this, is the same, it's just in reverse, right? Just Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just in reverse. You want to guide up there. Uh, if you've got a larger vessel, somebody to tell you when you're right over the anchor um, using hand signals, and then uh, you want to pull directly up. One thing, you never want to pull any Danforth-style anchor from the side, right? Uh, and this is a big mistake that boaters make. If you're pulling from the side – the, the, the anchor is just not designed to, to, to deal with that, right? The crown is going to bend. The, 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 the shank is going to bend over the crown. And, and so you can actually destroy your anchor from pulling from the side, regardless of whether you're working with a Danforth or a Fortress. Um, you want to pull directly up over. If you're having issues getting it up, um, one of the things we recommend is um, if, you're, if you're directly over, you want to go out 180 degrees to the, to the rear of the anchor and pull from the back. Right. So you're, you're, you're pulling, you're going directly over, you're going to pull from the direct rear of the anchor. If that still does not work, um, then you're likely under a pipe or, or, or something like that. And that's where we'd recommend, you know, cutting and then, and then, you know, maybe coming back for the anchor another time. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, I mean, you don't want to have to do this. Anchors are not, cheap right I mean, but there right. are times that you just simply have to cut it and if you're in quite a bit of water i mean the reality of getting it later is probably not that practical <laughs> but <laughs> yeah no exactly yeah. exactly i mean uh, th- there there's a there's a cottage industry for that too I mean, <laughs> divers who go down and grab those things and then bring them up but oh, yeah right. i think there's uh the the, it, the big big concern there is safety right you don't want to uh if you if you're stuck and it's absolutely not going to get up you're likely under a pipe or something like that right, right. um uh, the the Big thing I would say too is when you're pulling the anchor up, be mindful of when that anchor is going to actually come up out of the water because you don't want it to smack into the hull of your boat uh, and do any damage or anything like that. So you really want to make sure you're controlled once it's it's about to come out of the water. That's a very good point because uh, that uh... that's even more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The anchor will look cheap in comparison to that. Um. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What, what's the acronym for boat? <laughs> it's a break out another thousand or something like that. But yeah, you want to, you want to limit that, that, that type of damage that could be done. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the final thing I wanted to touch on in this, you know, kind of basics of anchoring discussion 
is, um, and we touched on this earlier, but there are situations that you're you're going to need more than one anchor or a different a different style of anchoring. Um, can you talk about talk about that a little bit more? Right. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, the sea bottom is going to determine really what what type of anchor you're going to be using. But um, typically, I mean, the most common situation where you're going to want to need use more than one anchor is when you're just at the sandbar. I mean, that's that's going to keep your boat in place so you can go out, get in the water, you know, have fun with your family, enjoy your food without worrying about anything drifting off or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and you definitely again, I, I if you're going out in the open water often, I'd recommend getting a storm anchor and keeping it keeping it aboard. Right. And, and that's a big benefit of fortress anchors they could be disassembled and reassembled very easily um so that you can stow them away and, and have that extra security and safety on board um you know if, if you're it, it, a lot of times what we're seeing down here even if you're um if you're docked right and and there's a hurricane coming at you um a little, we've got a, a whole hall of fame for anchors downstairs that have, have kept boats through hurricanes so you know um a lot of people will, will uh will stick it on the dock and then anchor off of both sides to keep the boat stable um there's there, there there's a lot of methods for doing that um but uh yeah i mean it, you never know what's going to happen and, and having that extra anchor on board um, will help you with security. And also if you're going to, if you feel like you're going to encounter different types of sea bottoms, you know, maybe keep one type of anchor on, on the, on the bow and then keep a reserve. That's, that's uh, a different type of anchor, you know? That makes all the sense in the world. Absolutely. Good. Well, this was a great conversation. Thanks so much for being here today, Chris. I, I really appreciate it. I, I, you know, I love this company. Um, I think I told you before we came on, came uh, on online. Um, you know, I, I came to this job out of the Marine Corps, and um, you know, we are a, an American-made company. Um, one of the only anchor companies that is American-made. Uh, everything's made right here in Florida. The aluminum sourced from here in the United States. Um, all the manufacturing's done in the building that I'm sitting in. Um, and, and, you know, I'm very proud to be here. This is a third generation family owned company, um, that, uh, currently owned by, uh, the, the grandson of the founder. And so, you know, it's, it, it's a great place to work and, and I absolutely love the product and I love the people here. So I'm glad that you brought up that, uh, made in America issue. That is, that is excellent. Makes me like Fortress even more. Um, so <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Partsview is proud to carry Fortress Marine anchors, and I encourage our listeners to visit partsview.com to learn more about the, their line of anchors. I've included a, a link within the show notes. And in initial, in addition to merely offering Fortress products, which is great, um, it's been really great working with Chris and Fortress anchors to assemble a number of resources for anchor selection, the basics of anchoring, and and other resources of, of this nature. So I encourage our listeners to, to check that out and also visit, visit fortressanchors.com and follow Fortress Anchors on both, both Instagram and Facebook. And those are links are in the show notes as well. So thanks again, Chris. Thank you so much, Tanya. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the parts view exchange talks, boating podcast. Are you in a dock war with your boating neighbor for the cleanest boat? Check out our marine soaps, polishes, waxes, and more at partsview.com. And for free shipping, use the coupon code PVTALKSSHINE, a special perk for our podcast listeners. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for boating knowledge, to keep in touch with the Partsview community, and for special sales and promotions. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And check out the show notes for the coupon code just mentioned, more information about Parts View and the products we offer, as well as our boating blog, the Parts View Exchange. And a big thanks to Mind for performing the original music featured within this podcast.